Jamovi is this really fantastic and very simple statistical analysis program. We are lucky to have it. It's new. It's based on the R statistical package language, which is freeware. So ecologists around the world use this. It didn't used to be free, and it didn't used to be simple. And you can now do the most powerful of, of, of uh, statistical analyses, data manipulations, and graphing using R. Um, but for our group, um, there's a bit of a step up to learn to program in R. And for us, we'll be using Jamovi, which is this simple program. Now, what's nice about it is that I'm going to point out to you that uh, we have some, this is a, a, a typical stats program has has a place around here where you see A, B, and C are different variables that will be entered. And uh, the results will come out over here of the statistical analyses. Um, you can also see that there is an, uh, these different tabs here represent the different kinds of analysis that we can do. We can do exploration, which includes analyses that are um, summarizing your data, calculating means, making graphs. A t-test of your data, where you can see, I click on that, you can do three different types of t-tests, just like in Excel, but easier. Um, for analysis of variance, it allows you to do several different kinds of ANOVA, including the one-way ANOVA and the ANOVA, which is the two-way ANOVA that we have talked about in class. It allows you to do correlation and regression using the regression, so we can fit a line to data and calculate correlation. Um, this one is going to be a... Uh, uh, a chi-squared testing and some other things. Uh, we may not use this one as much because we can program this very easily in Excel and uh, we don't use the factor analysis in this class but you might find an interest in doing so. Notice that we're in this tab called analyses. There are three tabs across here. The easiest way to get confused is to forget what tab you're in. So the tab controls what's going to be in this top bar. So if I go into the data window notice that I still have the data here but um, these are all the things that you can do to your data, which sort of behaves like an Excel spreadsheet, but not exactly. Um, there's an edit window that allows you to do some editing. Um, I haven't used it a tremendous amount, so uh, let's just move along. And I guess you have these, you can save your documents and things here. Please recognize that if you don't have Jamovi on the machine that you're moving something to, that you can't use Jamovi. Like I tried to email myself a Jamovi uh, file, like a data file, and because the computer I sent it to didn't have a Jamovi program loaded on it, it uh, my email rejected it and wouldn't let it in. So you may want to be aware that um, it's the things that you save and move around are, are not quite so easy to do if you're using computers that don't have Jamovi. You can't really open the files. Okay. Let's get started here. So we take a look at the data like this. Uh, let's say that you have some data, and in this class, um, that data might be something like this. Um, so on the left-hand side is how we've done this experiment from class, or imaginary experiment, where we add nitrogen or don't add nitrogen, and we add phosphorus and don't add phosphorus. You might visualize your data like this, and that's fine. And it, basically, it's set up as four squares, right? A fully crossed two-way ANOVA design. Um, alternatively, you might have the same data. Um, when you put it into Jamovi, it has to look different than this. No stats program accepts data looking like this. What they do is they want all these measurements as the dependent variable. That's the one that's going to change at different levels of the independent variables, right? And you put them all in one column. So the dependent variables are all in one column. That's basically all your measurements. And then you organize with grouping variables. So here you see nitrogen treatment is a grouping variable. The simplest grouping variable here is phosphorus treatment. So the first half of these numbers are phosphorus. So this is clearly the main effect of phosphorus and the main effect of no phosphorus here, right? So pretty much the phosphorus numbers are on the top and the no phosphorus numbers are on the bottom down here. So when you go in and then code the next one, which in this case is nitrogen, you'll notice that you have to break it up a little bit such that you the first 10 observations are nitrogen in the phosphorus category, the next are the no nitrogen in the phosphorus category. So this grouping variable has the same number of nitrogen and no nitrogen um, uh, lines of data, it's just that they're organized a little differently because I pretty clearly entered the phosphorus and no phosphorus first in two big simple groups there. So you'll notice the more lines of grouping variables that you have, the more columns, the more sort of broken up the data becomes as you enter it. Now I recommend that you do all of this stuff in Excel and get it ready to go 
so that you have a dependent variable, which might be, might be a biomass of the plant, and then you have each of your grouping variables. And then you can simply take one of these variables, this data out, and paste it into Jamovi. And I think the best way to do that is to actually, I don't think it'll go if you just try to, if you take the title, I don't think it'll go. Let's try it. Um, I don't think you can do it just taking the title though, because you can go and then let's say I hit paste. Well, it did go, but it gave me as the first line, it gave me this word dependent variable. And that line is not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be up in here where the A is. It should say the title of my variable. So I'm going to, I'm going to undo that and not do it that way. I'm going to go back over here. And if you wanted to, you could just um, have integer data without uh, titles up there, which I probably would have done. It's pretty clear that nitrogen and no nitrogen means the nitrogen treatment. So I'm just going to copy those out. I'm going to control C function on my, on my Mac. And then I'm going to go over here to the Jamovi. And Jamovi, I'm going to paste in the dependent variable. Now when I paste it in there, let's go take a look at the variable view here. So the data view, um, I'm going to double click on the, on the, on the A. All right? And that's going to take me into this variable. And I'm going to rename this variable. Um, I'm going to name it biomass, which is my dependent variable. Okay, So I can name it whatever I want here. But it's important the type be right. It says this measurement type is nominal. And nominal are numbers that are just uh, numbers. They're not in order, and they, they aren't like decimals and things. This is actually going to be a continuous number. Most of your dependent variables will be continuous numbers. Your data is not going to be integers. It's going to be decimals, actually, because some of these might be decimals, even though mine are not. And then I'm, I'm good there. So I can click my up arrow, and I'm done. Now, if I notice, my next column, if I get ready for my data, I can get ready for my data by saying this is going to be my phosphorus column. No, I'm going to make this my nitrogen column. And this one is would be nominal if I had numbers in there. Um, ordinal means it is numbers in rank, but they don't have the, the distance between them is not the same. Um, Well, let's come back to that for a sec. We're going to put nominal in there. Data type is going to be text. So I'm going to write words in there, right? And so um, that means nominal here means no, they're different things, but they don't have an order. So that's pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing for group C. I'm going to call this my nitrogen data. Sorry, this is phosphorus. It's nominal. This is going to be text. Again, it's going to be words in there. You have to put it in as text if you're going to be entering words because words are not data except they're words. Okay, now I'm going to go in here and select these things here. These are the codings or sometimes called codings or grouping variables for my work. Okay, now I'm going to go in and see if I can just paste into the I'm done labeling phosphorus. All right, I'm going to go to the top row. Make sure you're in the top row here, row one, and then paste all that in there. Great. So um, in this case, maybe I wanted to do a, uh, that's, that's what my data might look like. Okay. I'm going to show you some other kinds of data. We can now do an analysis if you wanted to. Um, let's do an analysis where we do a simple t-test. Um, the t-test, I could do a t-test and it would say, oh, independent samples? Yeah. Okay. So let's just do the main effect of nitrogen as a t-test, right? So if I wanted to do that, I go biomass of a dependent variable and the grouping variable, I'm just going to use the phosphorus here. Okay. There, because there's exactly two groups of phosphorus. Um, it's going to be a student's tease. I have some things to click here. In general, you don't need to click these things unless you want uh, to see them. It's already providing me the result here. It's very significant and um, that's great. Now I can change some of these and watch what happens. I can add something like a descriptive plot. It's like, don't you want to see the plot of the means? I kind of do. How, do the, how does the mean plot look? There it is. This is done as a uh, um, has a point essentially and we're going to look at these. These are 95 percent confidence intervals around those numbers. That's really nicely done for us. Um, and the median's plotted on here as well, so we can see if the mean and the median are not the same, the data is sometimes not very normal. Um, 
but there you go. That is the output of this. Um, let's go back to the ANOVA window, though, and uh, try to do a one-way ANOVA. So in this case, as you can see, it's a very powerful program because so it can very quickly do these things. Again, my dependent variable is always the same. You click that arrow to bring it across. If you don't like it, you click on it and you bring it back out because the arrow switches directions, right? Oop. I like it in there. And then the grouping variable this time, I'm going to use phosphorus again as the grouping variable. And this time it's a one-way ANOVA just for the main effect of phosphorus. Now I can see again it's significant. There's these other things. I can do a descriptives plot and it will plot the same data in descriptives. It's a slightly different standardized plot for this. Um, you can assume equal variances or don't assume equal variances. I don't play around with those things very much. Um, I usually don't assume equal variances. That's good only because my I'm conservative more or less. Uh, I don't, it's okay with me if I don't get a significant outcome. Um, so there it goes. That was pretty good. And those are your plots. You, may, you can plot your data like this. Um, if you really wanted to plot your data in a different way, um, you could do that as well by going back to exploration. Say you wanted to do the plot in the way that I like it with a bar graph. And I could go biomass dependent variable. And I want to plot the phosphorus, split it up by phosphorus. Okay, and then what I want are not statistics, but plots. So bar plot, good old fashioned bar plot. And it'll also do histograms. Let's take a look at those. And you can see it's working right here. It's made these plots already and I can look at them. And if I'm done with this, I can kick to the right here and then I can go into this window and look around. But there's are some really nice um, uh, graphs. Now, one question you might want to ask yourself is, what do those error bars represent? Um, you know, one way to figure that out may be to, uh, it looks like they're about five up and five down. So we could do a uh, look at these statistics. And calculate the standard error of the mean. It's interesting. didn't change the plot, it just added on some stats somewhere in here. Standard error of the mean. So it's probably two standard errors of the mean. Standard deviation is a big number. Two standard deviations is a really big number. Two standard errors of the mean. So that's probably they're plotting two standard errors of the mean there. But we could try to look that up in about Jamovi to find out what's going on there. Um, now, let's go back and try to do another analysis. And all these things get saved. When you go back to look at them, you change the analysis and you'll change the graph. So you have a good record of what you did. So you can see what you did wrong later. So let's go back to ANOVA, standard ANOVA. Now in this case, I can take the same data, biomass over here. And this time I'd use my fixed factors. It says fixed factors, and that means that these are treatments that I have chosen. Um, so nitrogen and phosphorus. Those are two fixed factors. So what you see that's really nice is um, it's already put all this together for me and it doesn't quite fit in the screen which is a little bit frustrating so um, I think that's partly because I have the uh, I have it zoomed in a bit. I can fix that. This is where I went to zoom it in so let's go zoom out. I just like to see bigger numbers. So now it fits nicely at 100%. So the ANOVA itself is a two-way ANOVA. And here it is, is written. There's your, when you report a two-way ANOVA, you'll report this entire table here, OK? That's because for the main effect of nitrogen, you have a thing called the sum of squares, which you guys calculated when we did this in Excel. And we, I can explain this later in lecture. But you have an F, number, an F statistic here and a p-value. And for the main effect of phosphorus, there's an F statistic and a p-value. And for the interaction, there's an F statistic and a p-value. And um, you know, I often do an overall model test, um, which tests the entire ANOVA to see if it was significant. A little bit difficult to ex explain why that's different for me. Let's just take it out of there. It makes it simpler. So this basically says, um, 
you know, we've done three statistical tests here, and these are the results, and what you're seeing is that nitrogen by phosphorus interaction is not significant. That's pretty interesting. So let's take a graph. I'm curious now. I want to see what that looks like. Now, it isn't going to, by default, uh, um, graph that information. So what we can do is go over and take a look at uh, the exploration again. Let's finish the ANOVA here, and then we'll go back to exploration. So now you're ex that's done with your ANOVA, and it's in there. So whenever you go back to it, look at that. I click back to it. I mean, isn't that nice? So watch what happens here. It's like, oh, what did I do when I did this independent samples T test? What was I doing? And I click in this window over here, and it shows me exactly how I filled out the form when I was doing it. That's really nice. Okay. Um, so we can go back and find out what you did wrong and just slightly change it if you want, and it'll, it'll be the way you want it. So we're going to do exploration now and um, in descriptives. So this time I'm going to look at biomass as my dependent variable again. This time I'm going to include nitrogen and phosphorus. And what I want to do is I want to see those uh, bar graphs again, the bar plot. I want to see bar plots. Let's see what they look like. So it won't give you the line plots that I looked at in class, but it will give you this kind of thing, from which you can derive your same impressions. For example, you would draw a line between these two points here, and you'd say, oh, no nitrogen has this effect, and then you can see the addition of nitrogen has this effect. Okay, so you can see those two lines would be parallel, um, and that is information that's useful for interpreting the interaction so that you know that nitrogen has pretty much the same effect with, uh, um, I mean, sorry, phosphorus and no phosphorus. Um, the effect of nitrogen is the same across both levels of phosphorus, okay, high and low. So that should feel pretty good. Um, that's pretty much how we're going to use Jamovi. So um, I could take another look at one other file that I have on here. Um, this one I put in for you that is uh, some other data that I made. Um, in this data set, I, I made some asparagus over here that I put on four different soil types. And I might want to look at an ANOVA of the asparagus on the four soil types. And so to do that, I go click on the analysis button. I go to the ANOVA. I said I want to do a one-way ANOVA. And I want to know asparagus height and soil type is my grouping variable. and Soil type is my grouping variable. And uh, then I just I want to see what my ANOVA, there it is, there's my ANOVA. That was quick and easy. Significant difference. And if you wanted to take a look at the, the, uh, the descriptives on this, we can take asparagus height variable on by soil type, split by soil type. And then I could do some bar plots. And uh, let's go see what they look like. See that? That's great. So what we see is secondary has really small stuff, um, and, and terra firma has small stuff, and the bog and the ditch both have higher things. So it looks like asparagus likes water. That's no big surprise. You know, we may be able to go back in here and do again, though, another ANOVA on that same kind of data. Now let's take a look at the data that I have. Let's go back to data for a sec. So in this case, though, I entered some more. This is more... Uh, more fun data that I put in, total plant biomass, fertilizer, low and high. Um, this is fertilizer. Oh, this was a particular question about um, using fertilizer and using uh, and on the, with herbivores present. So the idea is, if, is your bivory level higher when fertilizer is applied or not? And so we can kind of look at that. And again, you're going to do an analysis. Now do an ANOVA. Uh, we're going to do an ANOVA. We're going to use uh, total plant biomass. We're going to have fertilizer and herbivore level. And uh, there's the answer. The answer says that everything's significant, but fertilizer, not so much. So notice that the interaction here is significant. So I'd be like, ooh, we better graph that so I can see what's going on. So we go back to back there to descriptives. 
and I'm going to have uh, the variables that I'm going to graph. It's going to be total plant biomass, and I'm going to split it up by fertilizer and herbivore level. All right, and I, I want this bar plot. I just love bar plots. We could do box plots too, if you're curious about those. Uh, let's see how it looks. Jamovi's thinking away over here on my ANOVA. No more of me having to do it. So what we're seeing here is that when there's low, um, doesn't really didn't I didn't label it very well. So um, herbivore level and fertilizer level are not really labeled that well. But you can see that uh, low and high and low and high. These are fertilizer levels. So low fertilizer, high fertilizer, low fertilizer, high fertilizer. So what you're seeing is that in the presence of, in this case, of caterpillars, we didn't get as much biomass on the high fertilizer area. See, in fact, it's a reverse. We, the brown line's lower than the blue line, and here the brown line's higher than the blue line. And the brown line is the uh, high fertilizer category. And when you put a lot of fertilizer without herbivores around, you get a lot of extra growth. But if you put a lot of fertilizer on with herbivores, you get reduced growth. All right, and that's because herbivores love delicious um, uh, fertilized crops. So that's the introduction to Jamovi. I hope you liked it. I think it's pretty easy to use. I'll have to figure out on the next unit how to get images off of here into your PDF document or your Word document that you can save as a PDF. So thanks for tuning.